Hello and welcome to Wayscan, the international DX program from Adventist World Radio. Researched and written by Adrian Peterson in Indianapolis and produced in the studios of WRMI Shortwave in Miami, Florida. I'm Jeff White. This is our last edition of Wayscan for 2012. Happy New Year, everyone. Today, radio broadcasting in Sri Lanka after the war. And our Indian DX report. In our program today, we present the next episode in the onward progress of radio development on the island of Sri Lanka. The topic for this occasion tells the story of radio events upon this tropical island around the middle of last century. In synopsis, there was just one radio broadcasting station on the air in Ceylon at the time when the heavy clouds of war broke over continental Europe at the beginning of September 1939. This lonely and now almost forgotten radio station was the medium wave unit VPB, with studios at Torrington Square in Colombo and a 5 kilowatt medium wave transmitter on 700 kilohertz that was located out a little at Velikada. In 1941, the call sign was changed to ZOH, and the shortwave transmitter, previously on the air with just one half kilowatt, was reactivated with an increase in power to one and three quarters kilowatts on a new channel, 4880 kilohertz. The official call sign for this shortwave transmitter was ZOI, though usually only the medium wave call sign ZOH was announced on air. During the following year, the Torrington Square Studio Building was handed over temporarily to the Royal Air Force, and the radio studios were transferred into a cottage known as the Bower, out on Cotter Road, Barella. An introductory international shortwave service was inaugurated at the high-security RAF radio station at Akala, some 10 miles north of Colombo, on October 11, 1944. The programming was produced and coordinated at a new studio facility on Turret Road, opposite the town hall. This new shortwave broadcasting service, identified on air as Radio SEAC, Candy, though it was located near Colombo, not in Candy. When the Pacific War ended rather abruptly at the beginning of August 1945, there were now just two radio broadcasting transmitters on the air in Ceylon, and these were Radio SEAC, with the Turret Road Studios and one shortwave transmitter at 7.5 kilowatts at RAF Akala and Colombo Radio with its Bauer Studios and 5 kilowatts on 700 kilohertz medium wave at Velikata. However, at this stage, work was already underway on the adjoining property at Akala for the large new transmitter station for SEAC Radio, and this was taken into service on May 1, 1946. Initially, there were just two transmitters at SEAC Akala, a 7.5 kilowatt RCA unit, and a large 100 kilowatt Marconi unit. Subsequently, two more RCA transmitters at 7.5 kilowatts were added, and also a 1 kilowatt transmitter for local coverage. The usage of the RAF radio transmitting station was phased out when the SEAC station was activated, and the 7.5 kilowatt RCA transmitter was reinstalled in the new adjoining building. The antenna systems at Radio SEAC consisted of four curtains and three folded dipoles, and these were beamed towards India, the Far East, the South Pacific, and England. The antenna that was beamed towards England was reversible for the service to the South Pacific. Programming for the Akala shortwave station was coordinated in the Turret Road studios, and it was made up of locally produced programming together with relays from the BBC London and All India Radio Delhi, with occasional inserts from Radio Australia Melbourne. The locally produced program, featuring music requests from listeners, was one of their most popular programs. At prearranged times, Radio SEAC acted as a relay station for the BBC London, and there were occasions when cricket broadcasts from Radio Australia were picked up in Salon and relayed on shortwave to the BBC London. A monthly magazine was produced in Colombo and posted out to listeners, the SEAC Forces Radio Times. This magazine gave an outline of all programming, together with frequencies and timings, 
It had also included feature articles about the station and other items of listener interest. On June 1, 1946, the administration of Radio SEAC was taken over by the War Office in London. Though the station still identified on air under the SEAC and British Forces slogans, this administrative arrangement ended in February 1949, and it would appear that the station was then off the air for a month or so. SEAC Radio was a prolific verifier of listener reception reports, and they stated that they received around 8,000 listener letters a month from all over the world. Their QSL card was sort of squarish with a phoenix bird arising out of the ashes printed in black on a white card. Beginning in April 1949, the station was taken over by the BBC as a relay station during the interim period in which a massive facility was under construction near Tabrao in Malaysia. The temporary usage by the BBC of this shortwave relay station in Ceylon concluded at the end of the next year, 1950. The BBC also installed a new medium wave transmitter at Velikata for the relay of BBC programming to the Colombo area. This station, ZOJ, was inaugurated apparently around April 1949, and it was on the air with 10 kilowatts on 920 kilohertz. However, during this interim period, a new commercial service was introduced on shortwave in Ceylon on September 30, 1950. That's the story on the next occasion when we take another look at the radio story on this island, the gem in the Indian Ocean. You're listening to WaveScan from Adventist World Radio. Send your comments and reception reports to WaveScan, Box 29235, Indianapolis, Indiana, 46229 in the United States. That's WaveScan, Box 29235, Indianapolis, Indiana, 46229 in the USA. Or you can email us at wavescan at awr.org. Our email once again, wavescan at awr.org. In our ancient DX report for the year 1902, we report the comment of a radio historian who stated that the Navy in each major country of the world was now involved in studying and experimenting with wireless. We might also add that wireless was on the air experimentally in many different countries throughout the world during the year 1902, in Europe, North America, Africa, Asia, and the South Pacific. During this particular year under review, the Japanese Navy established two experimental wireless stations, one in Tokyo and the other in Yokosuka, as the first wireless stations in Asia. The Marconi Company established two wireless stations in Africa, one in the Congo and another in Angola, and these were the first wireless stations in that continent. Marconi himself was involved with further experimental transmissions from ships on the Philadelphia in the Atlantic at a distance of 2,099 miles from the Poldu station, and on the Kohinoor for the benefit of the assembled governors from the various colonies in the British Empire. The tests from Poldu to the Philadelphia were radiated on 820 kilohertz medium wave. Marconi was also involved with test transmissions on board the Italian Navy vessel Carlo Alberto, and these experiments took place in the Mediterranean, off the coast of European Russia and in the Atlantic. In fact, at one stage, Marconi was granted the exclusive usage of the Carlo Alberto, almost as though it was his own mobile experimental wireless station. Both France and Spain established land-based wireless stations on an experimental basis during the year 1902. The French stations were established on Ouchon Island, just off the western edge of France, and the mainland station was at Brest, 50 miles distant. The Spanish stations were located at Cabo de la Nao and Cabo Pelado, both on the Mediterranean coastline. Over in the United States, the Marconi Company rebuilt the antenna system at their Wellfleet station, CC, that had been destroyed in a windstorm at the end of November in the previous year, 1901. In August, the Marconi Company also took out a lease on the Jacobs property at Fire Island, just off the coast of Long Island, for the purpose of establishing what became known as the Babylon Wireless Station. Also during the year 1902, 
Lee DeForest constructed a wireless station on the roof of the Cheeseboro Building in New York City, and a companion station on the Hotel Castleton on nearby Staten Island. This Staten Island station is recognized as the world's first wireless radio station ever built on the premises of a hotel. DeForest also obtained land near the Montauk Lighthouse, right at the Atlantic end of Long Island, for the installation of a wireless station. In the meantime, the Canadian-born Reginald Fessenden was also busy on the experimental wireless scene in the United States. On April 19th, he gave a public demonstration of his wireless equipment to several government officials, including Army and Navy personnel, on Roanoke Island, North Carolina. Soon afterwards, he transferred the equipment to another location, this time to Old Point Comfort in Virginia. Right at the end of the year, Fessenden was awarded a patent for the transmission of voice messages by wireless. During the summer, Archie Collins conducted voice transmissions between ship and shore. The two small ships involved in this experimentation were the John G. McCullough and the Ridgewood, both owned by the extensive Erie Railroad System. Interestingly, there was also a series of voice transmissions over on the west coast of the United States. Young Francis McCarty successfully transmitted experimental voice messages in the famous Golden Gate Park to his brother Ignatius on the other side of Stowe Lake. During this same era, three young men in New Zealand conducted their own successful wireless experiments. James Logan sent Morse code signals across Wellington Harbor at the bottom of the North Island, a Mr. W.P. Huggins sent Morse code signals across a short distance at Timaru in the middle of the eastern coast of the South Island, and Joe Passmore, at the age of 17, sent Morse wireless messages in Dunedin at the bottom of the South Island. It was during the year 1902 that extensive building work was accomplished for a huge new Marconi station near Sydney in Nova Scotia, Canada. This grand new station located near the coast at Tablehead, Glace Bay, was made up with several buildings, including the main transmitter building, which was four times larger than the earlier sister station at Poldhu in England. The four wooden aerial towers, made of pine wood 210 feet high, stood at the corners of a square 200 feet on each side. The transmission cables at the top of these towers were three inches thick, and they whipped around angrily when the power from the 75-kilowatt alternator was applied. The first day of transmission tests from this new station at Glace Bay in Canada was November 19, 1902. Around this era, the King of Germany, His Imperial Majesty Kaiser Wilhelm II, became very interested in the development of wireless, particularly for its usefulness to the German Navy. It is stated that a contingent of personnel from a German Navy ship at birth in Sydney Harbor, Nova Scotia, in Canada, made their way to the new Marconi wireless station at Tablehead, Glace Bay. It would appear that this event took place quite early in the year 1902. This group of 30 naval officers, under the leadership of the Navy commander and accompanied by the German wireless inventor, Professor Adolf Slaby, were intent upon viewing the latest wireless developments as installed at this massive new wireless station. The station manager, Richard Vivian, opposed their entry and stated that they would be welcome if they showed a letter of authority from Marconi or his company. The group demanding entrance to inspect the station stated that His Imperial Majesty in Berlin would be much annoyed if his men were not permitted to view the station. Next day, a company of 150 sailors showed up in a much larger attempt to overrun the property. In an intuitive bid to deter this invasion, as the radio historians call it, Vivian organized a defensive force of local laborers who successfully opposed the attempt. Next month, our Ancient DX report for the year 1903. And now our final Indian DX report for 2012 from Prithuraj Pukayasta. Namaskar world. At the beginning of this edition of Indian DX Report, I would like to wish you all Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year 2013. First, some news from India's national broadcaster All India Radio. Recently, AIR Aizol station from Northeast Indian state Mizoram was heard again on short 5050 kHz between 0 to 30 
and 0330 UTC after a long gap. But the revealing transmission between 11.30 and 16.30 UTC on this same frequency was severely disturbed by Chinese interference and AIR ISOL not even heard during evening hours. If you receive this station in your locality, then you can report it to All India Radio ISOL, Post Box 13, Radio Tila ISOL 7960001. Mizoram, India. All India Radio Silchar is a small medium wave station of 20 kW situated in the Barag Valley at southern part of Assam. These station sources recently informed that they have been heard by some foreign listeners including a ACE medium wave DXR from Finland on the frequency of 828 kHz. You can also try this station on 828 kHz on the medium wave during day, afternoon and evening hours as per Indian standard time. And fortunately, if you have luck to tune this station, reception reports can be sent to Akashwani Silchar, that's A-K-A-S-H-V-A-N-I-S-I-L-C-H-A-R at the rate gmail.com. India's public radio and television broadcaster Prashar Bharati has issued orders for six Nutel NX series 300 kW medium wave transmitters configured for DRM30 transmissions. The purchase is part of All India Radio's plan to upgrade facilities throughout India to DRM30 digital broadcasting. The DRM digitalization implementation will allow AIR to also use alternative platforms such as podcasting, SMS, webcasting and mobile service. AIR also intend to offer a 24-hour news channel along with other programming. Additional services such as interactive text transmission and disaster warning alerts are also planned. Prasar Bharati is also considering broadcasting radio programs of AM channels through mobile phones in India in addition to its existing FM channels program. Chief Executive Officer of Prasar Bharati Jawahar Sircha recently informed this in Kolkata. This initiative will increase the listeners of AIR and will also help to popularize its program. Bangladesh Betas domestic transmission on 4750 kHz is down for last several weeks. It is due to an Israel make SNPS filament failure. Now the same is being developed indigenously and engineers are trying best to resume the transmission shortly. Meanwhile, Bangladesh Betar external service is also carrying an irregular schedule due to some program in transmitters. Present broadcast schedule of Bangladesh Betar external service in English is 12.30 to 13 hour UTC on 7250 kHz beam to Southeast Asia and from 17.45 to 19 hour UTC on 7250 kHz to Western Europe. A new Tamil station seems to be testing from 0030 to 0130 UTC on 7525 kHz. Signals are fair to poor. Maybe it is a regular broadcast aimed to at Sri Lanka and Tamil Nadu in India. More details will be given in the next edition of Indian DX report. Tazim Radio, broadcasting from Myanmar, has extended schedule these days. They can be heard from 0930 to 1430 UTC in vernaculars and 1430 to 15 hour UTC with English on 7110 kHz. Well, dear listeners, with all the best we have done for today, we have to close our third English transmission. We shall meet you again on the air at our first English transmission tomorrow morning. You can listen to our morning English program transmitting and radiating on 639 kHz and 6.03 MHz. <laughs> Thank you.
Radio Hargesha from Somaliland this day is coming with good reception from 15 hour to 19 hour UTC on 7120 kHz. They also have news in English at 1322 UTC daily. Some DXers from different parts of the world including India have reported about successfully QCLing this station. RTM Malaysia, YFM and Sarawak FM transmitting from Kazang in Eastern Malaysia are being successfully QSL by some DXers from South and Southeast Asia. You can try YFM on 11685 kHz and Sarawak FM on 9835 kHz between 01 to 03 UTC. Aku rindu Allah, aku cinta Allah. Sarawak FM, Radio Malaysia, Sarawak. Baik, tepat pukul satu tengah hari nanti kita akan siarkan berita nasional ada pusat berita Radio RTM Kuala Lumpur dan kita akan kembali semula pada pukul satu lima belas minit tengah hari nanti. Satu tengah hari. Assalamualaikum dan salam satu Malaysia. Bersama saya Nurul Asmawati Harun dalam Berita Nasional RTM. Sari Berita Utama. Northern winter months are always good for long distance low frequency propagation in South Asia. Some of the seasonal stations are Radio Havana Kiva on 6000 kilohertz with English at 01 UTC. Cuba, broadcasting from Cuba, free territory in the Americas. We're transmitting in English on our international shortwave frequencies and streaming real audio online at www.radiohc.cu. However, sometimes Ankara Turki, which is on the same frequency, spoils reception. Apart from Cuba, recently I heard Shikozi. The sea breeze from Japan on 5910 kHz between 1330 to 1345 UTC in Japanese. Radio Sultanate of Oman in English on 15140 kHz between 14 to 1430 UTC. Radio Hargesha from Somaliland on 7120 kHz between 15 hour UTC. Holy Tibet in English. From on uh, 4905 kHz at 1630 UTC. Kyrgyz radio in Kyrgyz on 4010 kHz at 1530 UTC. Radio National the Amazonia from Brazil on 11780 kHz at 20 hour 45 UTC. Lutam. Na cidade, na beira do rio, no meio da mata, na beira do mar. O Brasil inteiro ligado no programa Madrugada Nacional, com João Mate Brown. Rádio Nacional AM Brasília. And with this, we came to the end of this edition of Indian DX Report. For this edition, I would like to thank our friend Victor Guntelike of Sri Lanka and Swapan Chakraborty Jose Jacob Parthasarathy Goswami from India and the new sources of DX India. Two beautifully designed QL cells are ready to be distributed among our listeners who send us a correct reception report for this edition of Indian DX report. For sending a printed QSL, by post, we request our listeners in India to send one IRC or Mint India stamps of rupees 25 for each QSL as written postage, and all listeners in abroad are requested to send two IRCs or two US dollars along with the reception report for a proper paper QSL by post. 
Reception reports without IRCs and mail stamps sent via postal mail or email will be awarded EQSLs. Please send your comments on reception reports to the Indian DX report care of Prithviraj Purkayasta, Phu Bangal Pukuri, Jorhat, 785001, Assam, India, or email your reports to Indian DX report at the rate gmail.com. Thank you all for listening and Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year 2013 once again. Thank you very much. Estimados colegas, diexistas y radioescuchas de Venezuela, Colombia y el mundo, los invitamos a participar en el tercer encuentro diexista colombo-venezolano que se llevará a cabo en la turística ciudad de Paipa en el departamento de Boyacá, Colombia, durante los días 5 y 6 de enero del año 2013. Mayores informes a través del correo electrónico 3 encuentro gmail.com Correo electrónico 3 encuentro gmail.com Por el diexismo latinoamericano hay que sumar y multiplicar, no restar ni dividir. En Paipa nos vemos. And we would encourage all of you in northern South America who have the opportunity to attend that Colombian-Venezuelan DX meeting on the 5th and 6th of January, 2013, in Paipa, Colombia. We end today's edition of WaveScan with some uh, New Year music. This is a called a Brindar by Daisy Celia, a Cuban-American singer here in Miami. Thanks for listening to WaveScan, the weekly DX program from Adventist World Radio, researched and written by Dr. Adrian Peterson in Indianapolis, Indiana. During the coming year of 2013, we would like to encourage the usage of shortwave radio broadcasting and listening in the continent of Africa. And throughout the year, we are planning to present many interesting topics about the radio scene in Africa. Next week, our opening topic will be the story of the BBC relay stations in the two Congos. We'll also talk about radio broadcasting and listening in Liberia. And we'll have our Japan DX report. A reminder that we have two QSL cards available for your reports on this program, one from AWR, another from WRMI. You can send your reception reports to WaveScan, Box 29235, Indianapolis, Indiana, 46229, USA. That's WaveScan, Box 29235, Indianapolis, Indiana, 46229, USA. Our email address is wavescan at awr.org. That's wavescan at awr. Dot org. A happy new year, everyone, from all of us at the WaveScan team. I'm Jeff White in Miami. Till next week, take care. <laughs>